Hey all you loyal R-Space fans, and welcome all you new ones. Today, we've got three stories, all looking for some relationship advice. Let's listen to what they gotta say, and then give them our opinion, shall we? First up, wife cheated and manipulated our kids. I don't know what to do. Me, 34 male, and my wife, 33 female, have been married for 11 years. We have two children together, 10 male, 11 female. We were together for 15 years. I earn a decent living and earn up to $400,000 to $500,000 a year. But at times, I have to do projects which require traveling. Our marriage was good with several ups and downs. In October of 2019, I had to travel to Europe for work. I stayed there for a month. When I got back from the work, everybody was a bit distant and cold towards me. They didn't come to receive me at the airport. I had to call an Uber. They ignored my talks and only communicated with me when necessary. I had doubts, so I asked my daughter why she's acting rude towards me. She just said, hope you had fun at your business trip. This was out of her character. Few days pass, I'm confused by the situation. I asked my wife multiple times about their behavior. She always said that they were tired of a long day at school. One night, I was checking my email on my family iMac. As I was finishing my work, I noticed that my wife's account is logged in. I thought of opening messages. I saw that one of her colleagues was on the top. I opened her conversation and scrolled through the entire page, seeing their flirting, sexting, and exchanging nudes. They planned on meeting at hotels. Apparently, she had ended things with them because she was feeling too guilty about it. I confronted her. She cried and begged me to give her another chance. I had anger issues in the past, so I simply took a drive to my brother's house and spent the night there. Next day, when I came home, the kids had already gone to school. She asked me to sit down on the couch to talk. She said that she was feeling alone at the time and he apparently made her feel special. I asked her about the timeline and said that if she lied, I would give her a divorce. She told me every detail. She had sex with him once at the end of the affair. She felt disgusted afterwards. She said she had too much guilt and ended things with him. I told her that I would divorce her. I contacted a lawyer and told him to start preparing the papers. As we had a prenup signed, so divorce was an easy option. I went to my room and opened my Mac to collect some proof of her infidelity. To my surprise, she had deleted all of it. The next day, she threatened me to not divorce her or she will take away her kids. She told them in the beginning of my work that I had an affair and had gone to see my girlfriend when in reality, I had gone for work. She made fake conversations of me and the other girl. She also told them that I would leave them alone on the streets to be with my girlfriend. She had manipulated them so much that they were convinced that I was the bad guy. In our country, if parents get a divorce, then the custody of the children would be given to the parents by kid's choice. I was helpless at this point. I canceled the divorce and proceeded to reconcile. It's been almost a year that I'm going through this crap. My kids don't respect me like they used to. They don't show me affection. My wife has been keeping this secret from my children. Schultz has been treating me like crap. Our bedroom is dead and I haven't had sex in 7-8 months. Because of all this stress at home, I stay out of home most of the time. I go home only to sleep at night. This led to an emotional connection with one of my colleagues for the past month. She's also divorced. Her husband cheated on her and left her for another girl in another continent. We have long talking sessions, dinners, and movie nights. I've been deprived of love and affection in my own home. I've told my wife to start showing affection. I try to kiss her, hug her, but I'm always turned down. Last week, I got intimate with my colleague. This was the first time I was having sex and in about 9 or 10 months. It was the best sex of my life. I've come here looking for advice. Should I divorce my wife and be with my colleague, or should I just live this double life? I have never been loved or appreciated in my home, but my colleague appreciates everything I do for her. If I leave my family, then my kids will think their mom's claims were right. I will be the bad guy in the eyes of my kids for life. Update. As I read the comments of my previous post, many of you had doubts that she is still having an affair or sleeping with someone else. I don't think that's possible. Since her affair in October, she left her job as soon as I discovered the affair, and then we installed cameras in her house, and I could see the live view of the camera whenever I wanted. She barely goes out and just watches Netflix while eating snacks. She has also gained around 60 to 70 pounds in this period of time, so hiring a PI for investigating that, if she is having an ongoing affair, is not reasonable to me. Bay, you suggested of recording your conversation with me about her affair. This was a solid move, thanks to Reddit. 
I also recovered my old messages and receipts to give my kids proof that I was on work trip last year. Also, many of you suggested to recover texts and pictures from my Mac using some professional help, but my wife is a tech specialist, so I don't think that she would leave any evidence. I ordered a good quality small and portable voice recorder. I also planned a trip to my parents' house with the kids as I wanted alone time with them to describe the situation. They love their grandparents, so I knew they would never deny the trip. I also told my whole plan to my colleague and requested her to understand my situation. She was very supportive and told me that she would not contact me for a whole week except for work-related issues. On Wednesday, my voice recorder arrived in my office. On Thursday evening, I drove my kids to my parents' house. They stayed there, but I returned to my house after dropping off the kids. I spent the night at my house with my wife. I started the voice recorder and kept it in my pocket. I tried to initiate intimacy with my wife, but she was ignoring me. I asked her what she has done for me in the past year other than manipulating my kids against me. She started shouting and said, I'll make sure they never know the truth and you'll never be able to give me a divorce. I asked her if she would ever be intimate with me, to which she answered by saying, I have no interest in sex, but you have, so it's not my problem. Go look somewhere else for it. I said that I am not like her and would never break my vows for an affair like she did. At this point, she was angry and said, I had an affair because you left me lonely and treated me like crap. If you want, you can have one too, but don't disturb me. She was so loud that even her neighbors would have heard that. I got the proof I needed to prove my children I was not a cheater. On Friday, I took a voice recorder in the office, edited the audio, and saved on multiple devices. I also collected other proof of me at work on business trips last year. In the evening, I went to my parents' house and spent the night. On Saturday morning, I sat down with the kids and told them my side of the story. They obviously didn't believe me until I showed them proof. My daughter started crying. My kids hugged me and assured me that they will never hate me or act rude towards me in the future. To be honest, this is the moan I was waiting for for a year. That night was the best night of my life. I never had felt so close to my kids in years. On Sunday, I called my wife and told her that me and the kids were going on vacation and would not be able to contact her for the next three or four days. I also contacted my lawyer and told him to prepare the divorce papers. Now, here I am, with my kids preparing for mountain climbing. I haven't told the kids about my Kali. I also plan to start family therapy with my kids so that my communication with them can improve. I am planning to tell them about my colleague after the divorce during therapy. All is good, but my suggestion is to not tell your kids or introduce them to the colleague anytime soon. Telling your kids about another woman right now would make them question if what their mother told them was correct. It would also screw with their head and make them feel guilty. Remember, it's easy to pick dad when you know that mom screwed dad over. It's hard to leave mom when you see mom will be all alone and dad already has someone. Not to mention the guilt of thinking it's someone replacing their mom. I suggest you keep your relationship with your colleague quiet for months, if not for a year. If the two of you are still seeing each other after that, and it's serious, then you can slowly start bringing her around. But until then, don't. You're not sure how serious this is going to be, because it's just something new, so it's exciting. Anyway, I do have a question. I know you I signed a prenup, but will you still be paying out spousal support? And if she has the kids, that would also be child support? I know you can't include child support in a prenup, but you can add a waiver of spouse's support. However, in cases where there is a large gap of wealth, the judge still grants spousal support. I guess this is all too fresh and you might not know until further talks with the lawyers. Best of luck. Next up. Next up. The ex marries her affair partner days after the divorce. Ouch. Never thought my 35 male life would become a train wreck after all these years of blissful married life. We've been together for eight years, six years married. She, 30G female, was closer to my parents than I am. Our marriage was perfect and the sex was great. Granted that there were some lean periods now and then, but we always managed to find our way back to each other with renewed effort and steadfastness. Both of us were in high paying jobs and there were no problems financially. The only recurring argument that we used to have was in regards to having kids. I always wanted to start a family with her. Coming from a big family myself, I couldn't wait to start my own. She, however, maintained that she wasn't comfortable taking on a parenting role so soon in her life. Of course, I respected her opinion. She had certain aspirations in her professional front, and she needed time and space to establish herself, something she would lack if she got pregnant so soon. Three years back, 
She got a career-changing promotion I was extremely happy for her. She had sacrificed a lot for her career, and therefore, it was all that more special when her efforts were rewarded. This, however, took a toll on her relationship. Her new role came with more responsibilities. I found her constantly exhausted and distant. She often stayed back late and even used to take official trips on weekends. Our intimacy hit an all-time low. We only had sex when I initiated it, and that too very rarely, as she mostly excused herself with some reason or another. This made me frustrated, but I stopped making any advances from my end after that point. In hindsight, I realized that she never stopped caring for herself, even when the sex was zero, be it revamping her wardrobe, getting the gem off in, and dressing up regularly. I respected her too much to think that she would do something as low as sleeping outside the marriage. It never occurred to me even once. When I found it, it was completely by accident. My phone was low on charge. I picked hers to make a call. Her phone was nearby, though I didn't know her pattern. My wife was asleep and I didn't want to wake her up. To this date, I don't know what spurred me to do it, but I took her phone by the sides and held it tilted against the light. Dimly, I could make up the swipe pattern of her fingers, which I replicated. I was surprised that it actually worked. Ignoring the guilty feeling, I opened up her WhatsApp messenger. There was nothing on it, and I felt a pang of shame for a moment. I closed it, and then opened up her Facebook messenger. My whole life came tumbling down. I found it all there. Thirteen months of endearing texts, sweet nothings, shared reminiscences, and promises to meet up for sex. She had an intense emotional and sexual affair going on with her boss ever since she had been promoted. They had done it everywhere. On his car, on his house, on office trips, and even in his private cabin at the office. I literally went numb with pain. I wish I had confronted her then and there, but somehow my mind stopped working. I just sat on the couch like a zombie and I still remember her waking up and getting ready for the office with that coy look on her face, humming and whistling like a teenager going on a date. I just sat there like a frozen doll. The whole week went in a haze as I still couldn't work up the courage to confront her. And yet, with each passing day, I felt something die in me a little by little. My chat with my best friend helped me a little. I finally broke the news and confronted her. I'd imagined that she would break down, apologize to me, and offer to work on her marriage. I'd entertain the possibility of us taking marriage counseling. Yet, none of that happened. She did break down briefly with tears and apologize for the hurt that they had caused me. Only after she said they, did I realize the enormity of the situation. They were truly sorry for the hurt that they had caused. It was never their intention to hurt anyone, and they had wanted to open up about the same for a long time, but she thought that I wasn't ready for it. I begged and cried like a child to make her say, but she was all set. And my pettiness and desperation, I even threatened to complain about them at her work. It was probably the straw that broke the camel's back. After that, there was simply no hope for reconciliation, and she broke all contacts with me and only communicated via her lawyer. The divorce only happened six months later, after which she promptly moved in with him. I didn't contest her, and the settlement was fair for both of us, as she too was gainfully employed. They are married now, and the other day I was checking out her Facebook, which I admit I do regularly. They had posted a happy pic captioning that she is now pregnant, which was strange as she never wanted to start a family with me when I had been married with her for years. I just don't understand anymore. I had grown more and more miserable day by day. I tried dating, but it just doesn't work for me anymore. I had never been as happy as I was during the first few years of our marriage when we were simply infatuated with each other. I wish I could go back in time and change things even though I don't know what I could do differently. Updates I have uninstalled all my social accounts except a professional network. The temptation to peep in was just too much and I agree that is preventing me from moving on. As far as going no contact, she has already blocked my contact and all the messengers. I don't plan on re-establishing contact either. Regarding reporting to HR, I'm afraid that the ship has long sailed. They are already registered as married in the employee portal and she has been moved to a different wing. More importantly, thanks a lot for the support. The resources you have shared via comments and chat have been a great help. <sighs> That's rough. I will. Life goes on. Next up, I just found out my husband, who has a history of cheating on me, has cheated on me again, then there's a surprise, and gaslighted me saying that he's done nothing. I found out about my husband's secret Reddit account, to which I found that's where he does all his not-safe-for-work activities, after we promise each other to turn off not-safe-for-work content in our settings. We promised that like two to three weeks ago. His new account is about 25 to 26 days old. 
On the 25th of November, he messaged someone saying he was down to chat and play some time. Even though on Thanksgiving, he told me he hasn't done anything recently. Thanksgiving was on the 26th. He also made a post inviting other females to chat with him over SC and other means. His account history shows that he viewed r slash sexting and a bunch of other related channels. The last time I found out he was cheating on me was when he made a dating profile and also signed up for cam sites, which was something we agreed to not do when it comes to pornography viewing. He's always apologized after he found out and swears he'll be better, but obviously, it hasn't. Every few months, I'm finding out something new. I had a gut feeling he was doing something behind my back for weeks, and every time I brought up the feeling I had, he always said he's been good and has let me check to his phone, but I didn't look deep enough. He's always been a good liar on the surface. This time, I have pictures and screenshots of everything I have seen and what he's told me over the text. I'm thinking about outing him to our therapist and or his boss at work. What makes this worse is that I'm three months pregnant and I am now seriously considering getting away from this a-hole and leaning closer towards aborting this baby. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And I shouldn't have to. He's also leaving for work-related stuff in a couple of days and he'll be gone for two weeks. And I am so glad I'm finding out before he leaves. We even had a therapy session two weeks ago in which I finally got to talk about my feelings regarding his dating site incident and in front of her therapist, he validated my feelings and promised me that he wouldn't do anything to jeopardize or harm our relationship again. You can tell I'm calmer about this than usual because this isn't the first time he's found some way of cheating on me. I accepted the fact that he might have been cheating on me behind my back so that it would lessen the blow if I found out and my gut feeling is now satisfied. Ladies and gents, that deep knot you feel in your stomach that you can't shake is always right. Regardless of how much paranoia you're feeling and communicating, it's right. Regardless of whether your partner says it's unfair to think of them that way. He also frequents this subreddit a lot, so when he sees this, F you very much. I don't think reconciliation is an option anymore. How are we supposed to reconcile if he continues to cheat on me in other ways if we haven't even reconciled the first part yet? And when he promises and apologizes that he'll do better every time, I'm honestly thinking divorce is the best option to go from here. His words of adoration towards me do not affect me any longer. I'm sorry, and I love you very much. Don't make me feel good or reassure me anymore. Update. I typed this at 3 a.m., and I went back and found out he tried sexing someone on Thanksgiving. 20 minutes before telling me he hasn't done anything wrong to hurt our marriage. We were also at my parents' house. Disrespectful AF. 100% leave this guy. I agree with your decision to abort the pregnancy. You aren't going to want to have to deal with the hundreds of unfamiliar women coming in and out of a potential child's life. It's not a good situation to bring a child into unless he were to fully give up parental rights. I just wouldn't want that for myself or the child. And with how selfish he is, you would probably luck out and he would sign rights away due to no responsibility on his part and no child support. But if you're three months in already, I don't think you'll have time to negotiate all that. I'm not sure. But you know what you need to do. He'll never be honest. You'll never be able to trust him. And he'll always be on the lookout for something or someone else. You don't want to have to deal with that for however much longer you decide to stay. It's a lose-lose situation here if you were to try and work on it. Also, in case you feel sentimental regarding the pregnancy, don't. It's the worst mistake people make when trying to fix a relationship. I'm sure you know that. The sooner you divorce him and move on with your life, the sooner you win. He will never be happy in any real sense because he's just out for sex and most likely will never be capable of anything much deeper than that. He seems exactly like my ex. Great liar, great at manipulation, always looking for something else sexual, whether it's pictures, chats, videos, and even call girls. They don't stop. I wish you the best whichever way you decide to go. Just think of what's best for you now. He doesn't get the right to factor into the equation anymore.